Okay, hi, I'm Mirka. Uh, this presentation will be basically overview about the uh, ongoing work uh, on uprobe um, multilink, which is um, basically uh, basically a way uh, to attach multiple uh, to attach BPF program uh, to multiple uh, uprobes. We can do it also now, but uh, there are some difficulties and uh, the uprobe multilink is trying to, to address that. So first, what's uprobe? Uprobe is basically a probe that you can install uh, on the uh, application or, or the library. Um, basically, it's defined um, by the path. Uh, that's the user interface. You have the path and the offset. Uh, of the space where you will actually enter uh, the probe and any time uh, when the application is executed and going through that place, uh, the probe uh, will be hit and uh, sequentially the BPF program uh, will be uh, executed. Uh, uprobe is also used when you want to actually attach uh, BPF program to uh, USDT probe. So like the uh, user uh, statically uh, defined range points if there are in the application. If you are actually uh, attaching a BPF program to it, uh, the, the way it's done is that we actually use uprobe uh, to attach that. Uh, as I said, uprobe is defined by the path uh, offset and it's also possible uh, to specify the PID uh, which will limit uh, the probe execution just uh, for that, uh, for that uh, process ID. Uh, there's one extra uh, field uh, which makes sense for USDT but is part of uh, uprobe configuration is this ref counter offset. It's basically another, uh, another like Boolean value which got set when the, uh, when the USDT probe is attached and it will be set uh, like to true and uh, it's counter. Ah, oh, okay. Fair up. Yeah, for me, it's just another field that I need to take care about so it's properly attached. <laughs> and it's ongoing work. Yeah. So at the moment, how it actually uh, looks like uh, when you want to create uprobe is that uh, you need a perf event uh, to do that. So basically, uh, you are attaching BPF program, so you need to uh, load the BPF program. You have the program uh, FD. Then you need to open the uh, perf event uh, where uh, you basically need to use the kprobe uh, PMU. Oh, sorry, uprobe PMU, uh, where you specify the path, the offset. And inside the kernel, uh, the perf event installation will actually do, will execute the uh, uprobe uh, register which is like the uh, API how to, uh, how to create the uprobe. The path translates to inode and inode and the offset are like the keys, uh, are like the interface uh, how, to, how to create the, uh, the uprobe. So you create the uh, perf event with the uprobe and then you need to connect it uh, uh, with the uh, with the program that you just loaded, so there's uh, IOCTL command for that uh, set BPF on the perf event, and it will actually attach the BPF program to the perf event. Then you enable the perf event, and from the time you actually uh, monitor uh, monitor the uprobe. If you want to monitor monitor multiple probes like this. Uh, there are two problems. So it takes time. It turned out that actually creating 1,000 perf events together uh, with attaching the BPF program uh, on it uh, is is costly. Um, when you when you try to attach, for example, uh, 1,000 probes using the BPF trace. Uh, to the application on my system, it would take like uh, 20 seconds. 
So that's one problem, that it doesn't scale, scale well. Another problem is that uh, by creating the perf event, uh, you spend uh, the file descriptor. And if you are creating multiple e probes for each e probe, you need extra file descriptor. This is actually uh, this is output of proc uh, fd uh, directory of the BPF trace, and it's actually wasting the file descriptor also for the BPF program, which I don't think doesn't be doesn't need to be like extra program for uh, for each you probe. We could we could probably use the uh, same file descriptor, but still, I mean. If you create 1,000 U probes, you will waste 1,000 one uh, file descriptors because of the perf event. So that's the reason uh, for the creating the uh, U probe multilink. Mm, basically, it attaches uh, the BPF program to multiple U probes uh, without. Uh, using uh, the perf event, uh, basically you load the program and then you create the link uh, with the program, you specify uh, the U probes you want to create and the kernel inside is basically just running a sequentially U probe register for each U probe that you define and fortunately that's actually uh, very fast so you don't need any change there. Uh, like you can register, I tried like 50,000 uh, U-probes and it's within one second, so that's that's actually why it's all possible. <laughs> so how does the interface uh, look like? So uh, we are creating new link, so uh, uh, we needed to add uh, new fields to the uh, BPF ATTR. Uh, union uh, under the uh, link rate, and there's new U probe, U probe uh, multi structure, and basically it has all the fields that you need to uh, when when you are defining the U probe. Uh, but each field, uh, not each, but the paths offset and ref counter offset and the cookies, they are actually arrays, and when you take like one index. Uh, defines uh, one uprobe. So, if you go to that index to all the uh, uh, all the arrays, it will define one particular uh, uprobe. Uh, count just uh, tells you how many uprobes you defined. And flags uh, at the moment there's just uh, one flag that will tell uh, if that escape probe, uh, I mean uprobe or uh, return probe. So together, uh, so this is like the uh, kernel interface. Uh, there's libbpf uh, interface as well. So uh, for BPF link create, link create a function, basically we mimic the uh, kernel interface. So uh, there's a new struct in the link create ops that you can basically uh, put the same data that will then go to the BPF ATTR. Uh, more user friendly function is BPF program attach U probe multi ops, uh, where you can actually specify a uh, binary path together uh, with the pattern of the function, and uh, the function will uh, go through that binary and look up the symbols that match the pattern. and attach uh, the program as a U probe uh, to that uh, to all those uh, symbols or you can uh, you can basically use the same way as, as for the link rate and define all the uh, all the arrays uh, for the U probes that you want to uh, specify uh, together with this interface there's also uh, well not in the RFC, but yeah, it's planned uh, to be support for the section definitions. So um, currently there's like uprobe.multi and you specify under the slash, you say what path and the function pattern and you can define program like that and it will be 
automatically attach as uh, you probe multi uh, program and we will have the uh, sleeper buff uh, version uh, as well and the last change uh, in the libpf is that basically when we have the uh, function that attach uh, usdt uh, uh, usdt probe and Inside the, inside that function, we actually uh, we will uh, detect if we can use the ePROBE uh, multi uh, link interface and use that instead of uh, currently like using just the ePROBE. So effectively, when you will use that function, and there will be the uh, the kernel will have support uh, for the new link. It will attach the USDT probes uh, with this ePROBE multi link. Uh, there are two important helpers. They are not added, of course, but uh, there's like these two helpers have like flavors for different uh, program types and also for uh, programs that are attached with uh, uprobe multilink. So get func IP will get you the user space uh, uh, value of the uh, IP uh, register uh, at the probe. And the uh, attach cookie will uh, get attach cookie will actually get you the cookie that you can uh, specify when you uh, when you create the uh, U probe. So you can have your own data, specific data for a specific uh, probe available. Uh, I mentioned the PID filter. Uh, that's something that the current uh, RFC uh, doesn't support, but as per discussion, it seems that, well, to be able to replace the whole uprobe, current uprobe interface with this new interface, uh, we need it. So, and it looks like it's actually possible and not that bad. So, this will be added in next version. And yeah, I have some users that actually I'm using to test the uh, test the feature. So there's support for the Tetragon and BBF trace. There are pull requests for that. You can check it out. And that's it. If you have questions. Uh, sorry, that's more of a generic question. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how the multi-link interface works, but like what happens if one of the things that you're trying to install a link fails? Like do you fail everything or do you fail only the thing that failed? Yeah, I think we fail, fail everything. We don't have any like. So you have to roll back afterwards? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, there are specific error path like rolling back everything that we created so far. Would it ma make sense to like try everything and return, I don't know, like the, the successes or the failures? Yeah, we don't do this type of things, right? Even do, yeah. I mean, it's cheap enough to <laughs> like to fail if and try you over. if you have like thousands of functions and like one or two of them like might fail. I mean, it's it's on you like to break it maybe and like do the binary search of like which one are not attachable, but like you shouldn't instruct kernel to do that. Uh, one comment, like if you can go a few slides back about like UAPI, after talking a bunch with container guys, I think like nowadays, maybe in addition to accepting paths, we should uh, accept file descriptors. Hmm. They're like everything file descriptor. Like that's the most reliable way, right? So like identifying the file to which to attach, like we should probably have like a flag to say like this is the array of file descriptors versus array of like pointers to strings. So mm -hmm. that was one comment, and uh, I know we discussed that like on the mailing list about like multiple paths instead of just saying like everything stays within the single I know single file. I'm still not convinced, honestly. It, it seems like a complication in UAPI in implementation and in practice. You always work with one file. So look at like BPF trace at like UAPI uh, or at like libpf section definition. There is one path to, yeah. to the file, right? Uh, so I think like we, we can simplify it both for users and for the implementation. Uh, like furthermore, like when you have the BPF program, like the high level API, BPF program attach U probe or attach multi U probe, right? 
if you specify, if you can specify multiple L files and then like you have a pattern for each file, that just makes libpf like do so many like elf uh, parsings, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it would be much simpler to optimize it for single file, right? Like I open elf file once, maybe I sort like the patterns or like for function names or whatever, and then just do one pass. Otherwise like doing it multiple times is like super expensive. I think like overall, like I don't see a lot of benefit to having multiple file pass per, per one like multi u probe uh, link. Like what are the realistic use cases where you need this? Yeah, it's true that it for BPF trace, it's always like it will be separated by one path. For Tetragon, we can actually configure like multiple of them. By I doubt there will be like many of them, so it can be. Yeah, so like you, you can and have like and it's really fast. Like it's right, so it doesn't really matter. I would just make it so like in most common case, you'll be allocating an array of exactly the same pointers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, and then, like you, you said, by the way, like so, completely different question, right? Uh, you're saying the U probe register is super fast. Why is it fast, and why the K probe was slow? Like, remember, like we had to do like the multi IP attachment K probe and all this stuff. Why that doesn't apply to U probe? So it's doing different thing, right? I mean, we are so what uh, U probe register is doing it. Uh, it actually installs the software breakpoint on that offset uh, uh, of that inode, and that seems to be very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if I remember correctly, for K probes, right? Like the the slow part was like we were synchronizing CPUs and stuff like this. So like if you do it one by one, that's like where we spend most of the time just waiting for CPUs to get on the same page or something like that. That doesn't happen in U probe case, so or so for. K probe, we had to actually add the F probes, right? To to have another layer. Basically, what I'm getting is like, w do we still need to like improve U probe further and like do something like F F probe for U probe, uh, or like there is just no point because it no will be exactly the same. No, well, it doesn't look like. I, I mean, from all the testing, this I'm doing this sequentially for like 50k thousand U probes. It's very fast. It's always like within one second. It's I didn't even like measure it because it okay. didn't, didn't make any sense. Well, that's great. It's I also from all the profiles the main uh, main thing that was slow was like uh, perf event installation because it's doing like really uh, some unique things like using the IPIs to install to the particular CPUs and stuff like that and it's probably costly and. You you mentioned that you uh, try you have a test uh, to install the thousands of uh, <coughs> your, uh, your probe is a quick very quick, but my question is that when you doing that test, is that every object or file already been loaded into memory or is just somewhere and then no process using them because that may make different. I don't know how your probe is like work, but I imagine is maybe happen at the somewhere when the library have been loaded or binary been loaded into memory will yeah, do that uh, mm, imputation. Yeah, so, so the benchmark I was doing uh, was on the file that wasn't mapped at all. It was like uh, on the file system and uh, um, it had to be read like, yeah, I don't have too many, too much data on like all the profiling. I, I just uh, did the cases that were that were easy to do and that looked like I mean covered the, the whole thing. But I, yeah, definitely we need to also check like uh, the boundaries of the uh, of the performance. If there are like some conditions where the UPROB register might get actually slow, but. So far, it looks like it's fast. Uh, so, just a small comment. Were you discussing before having a single path for like a single binary for all the? So one use case that maybe doesn't really match this pattern, uh, and we don't really have it, but it's a potential thing to think about, is like 
looking for a single symbol in no binaries. So basically, it's a like p-thread mutex lock in all of the binaries of the system. Um, it's it's something that sounds reasonable to do, I guess. Well, that would be like always tied to some library, right? Or I mean, there is a m m more usual case. It's USDT. Like very often, you don't care which binary USDT is mm -hmm. defined in. So you just say like find all the USDTs, blah blah blah, colon blah blah blah. But even in that case, you have to like discover all the binaries and process them one by one. And that's the expensive part, not like creating 10 links, I think. So I would still keep it simple. Like the, the uh, BPF proc attach USDT, even if you need to do it across multiple binaries, like it's, it's very easy like to, to do this. Because yeah. like you still have to like identify every single binary where yes. you need to attach to, so yeah. That's true. All right, thank you very much. Thanks.